In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Lamy 2000. Let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on the pen. The thing most noticeable about this pen is its classic design. It's a very simple and quite easy to understand why it is a staple in the fountain pen community and why it's managed to stay there for so long. That simple design and elegant look. It goes fine with blue jeans and a t-shirt, the same as it would a suit or nice dress, depending on your gender. It writes incredibly well the whole time. I've never had a problem. Now, some people will speak about a sweet spot that this pen has, but I've never experienced a sweet spot to be able to have, honestly, a comment on it. But perhaps I'm lucky and I simply hold the pen the way they were thinking it should be held. You can see the writing sample and decide if that's the case or not. But I can understand why this, for many people, is the pen that they want to go to as frequently as possible. So much to be some people's daily writer. Now, if it wasn't for one other pen in my collection that I frequently use, this would probably be my go-to carry-around pen. Now that we know how I feel about the Lamy 2000, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. Lamy 2000 comes in a box like this, which holds a box like this. I have a real appreciation for the simple packaging. It's very direct in what's there, and it's good enough to keep for long term if that's how you want to store your pens but you're not gonna feel bad throwing it out. It's not a fancy ornate box that looks like it itself cost hundreds of dollars. So bonus for the packaging. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. Now, as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap a pen, I generally don't care. So how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Lamy 2000 is a Snap cap. The snap cap design is something I don't have a lot of pens that really do that, that I use frequently. This is one of them. It makes it very quick to use, almost as quick as something like the vanishing point, not quite as that one-handed operation, but it is nice sometimes to not have to screw your cap on and off. This gets us to the nib. This pen has a medium gold nib on it. I really like this hooded nib as I'm using it because I find that if I'm writing and I need to stop for a minute or two to think, this hooded design stops it from drying out too quickly, which is one of the things that it is really there for, so it works very well in its function, what this pen is all about. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Lamy 2000 is a piston filler and holds approximately 1.4 milliliters of ink. The ink for today is Mont Blanc's Beetles Psychedelic Purple. 1.4 milliliters isn't a ton of ink, but it's plenty to get through most everybody's day of writing. It's absolutely plenty. Now, looking at the pen and it being a piston, frequently you would think of it as holding a lot more than that. It does work very smooth. It cleans out very fast, which means it's not really a problem being a piston in any of those situations. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some pens need to be posted to be used comfortably, and some people prefer to post their pens. This pen can post. I always worry about the idea of posting it a little too deep because there's no cap band. For that, I rarely post it when writing because I do find it to be plenty long enough for me without any real problems, but you can post it and it does post securely. 
If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, the important part, the writing sample. This pen holds and maintains a very strong position in favorites of the fountain pen community, and with good reason. It is an amazing writer the entire time. Something that is really overspoken is about the nubs on the side, those ears for holding the cap. The fact that they're there and it is possible for you to feel them when you're holding the pen may affect a very small percentage of the fountain pen community. I don't think this is something you should be worried about getting it. In fact, watching some reviews where they talked about it and whether it could be uncomfortable or not made me feel some reservations, which is really a shame considering how much I enjoy using this pen every time I use it, which is fairly frequently. This one or the Pilot Custom 823 are almost always one of the pens I have inked. I never feel the ears. The discussion of that is far overblown. What should be getting talked about is just simply that smooth writing experience with, for me, a hint of feedback, which is perfect. I don't run to the smoothest paper because I do like that feedback. I haven't experienced any flow issues with this pen, regardless of any ink I've used in it. Sometimes pens have issues, but this one I haven't found its kryptonite for keeping the flow up. When the slightly tapered wider design as it moves away from the nib makes it fit my hand very nicely. And I do like how it feels while I'm writing the fact that it gets a little narrower back towards the crook in my fingers. There's nothing that is not enjoyable about using this pen. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Now here it is with a Yovo Extra Fine on the medium in the middle and a 1.1 stub on the right. I find this medium nib to be a true medium. It writes very well. Honestly, I kind of wish that I had it in a fine only because of how I use it most frequently during the days, but I haven't found the fact that I'm using a medium to be any kind of an issue and I haven't bothered searching out another nib. This is a pen that I enjoy enough that I would consider it. So how does it compare in writing size to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a Lamy 2000 with a medium nib, here it is next to a fountain pen Revolution Japer with a broad nib. A Duke 209 writing very upright with a Fude nib. A Nimesine Fission with a broad nib. A Noodler's Conrad with a fountain pen Revolution broad nib. A Twisby Vac 700 with a fountain pen Revolution broad nib and a Platinum 3776 with their broad nib. So it isn't a review without some size comparisons. Here it is capped, here it is uncapped, and here it is posted.
When considering the size of this pen, it is a very good pen. It's long enough. It's more than long enough to be able to use. And for someone like me that doesn't post, that's great. But more important to me than the length of the pen actually is the girth. And this one in its girth is really in a great spot. It is not too thin and it's not a ginormously fat pen, although I do enjoy fat pens. At this point, we have a dirty pen that we need to go ahead and clean. Be sure to check out the next pen review when we take a look at a Pilot Custom 823. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.